Hello everyone, we're going to be doing something a little bit different from the norm today. We're going to be analyzing the default game launch lineup of the Mega Drive Mini, and we're going to act accordingly if we notice any discrepancies that stand out. From the get-go, we have Strider, the great arcade to home port, classic made by none other than Capcom, who also happened to work on Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition. And Capcom, along with Konami, two of my absolute favorite companies, we have Contra Hardcore and Castlevania Bloodlines, courtesy of Konami, and we have a great treasure made by the developer treasure called Dynamite Heady, lesser known title, you would obviously know Ikaruga, Radiant Silver Gun, Alien Soldier, and invariably, for sure, Gunstar Heroes. And listen to this amazing music right here. This incredible Mega Drive Mini user interface music. I'm going to get back into this in a moment or two. Here we have Shinobi 3 and Streets of Rage 2, but inexplicably speaking, for some unknown reason or another, we do not have Streets of Rage 1 or Revenge of Shinobi, and this thoroughly disappoints me because every prior Sega Genesis collection has always had both of these uniquely amazing titles. Not only that, they share the same great music composer, Yuzo Koshiro, who also happened to work on Shenmue for the Dreamcast, Act Razor, his masterpiece of them all for Super Nintendo, and he also did the entirety of the Mega Drive Mini menu music that you're hearing right now. So yes, sit back right here to your hear tale of this amazing music that he conspired to put forth on the Mega Drive Mini. And uh, not only that, he's also working on Streets of Rage 4 with a few other select composers of great, vast talents. Here we also have Monster World 4. Love this game. Um, we have a game that was never released before, Darius. And we also have the built from the ground up Tetris. But in any case, we're going to move over to the PC right here and now. Be back in a Okay, we're officially on a PC right now. And we're going to open up this truly amazing spectacle to behold program called Hashi 2 ce which has done absolute wonders for the SNES and NES Classics in the past. But right here and now, we're actually going to be able to have incorporation and proper implementation for the Mega Drive Mini in the context of Hashi 2 ce thanks to the hard work, dedication, and perseverance, and hundreds of hours of work by Mad Monkey and Danaman 827 over the last several months. I mean, they did an absolutely incredible, tremendous job. And the very first thing you're going to need to do is obviously install the custom kernel, which is done by Kernel Install Repair. I'm going to do this right now and watch what happens. Very first time you do it is going to ask you, I'm going to click yes. It needs to install the drivers. The first time you're going to need to actually click yes to install the drivers. I've already done that, so I'm going to click no. And then, of course, uh, it's also going to tell you, waiting for your mini. I'm just going to cancel this out and show you what you need to do exactly so you can do this properly. Uh, you need to use a micro USB cable, and unfortunately, the one that comes with your Mega Drive Mini will not work. But if you previously purchased an NES or SNES Classic and or have a Samsung Galaxy or another appropriate phone with a data transfer capable charge cable that has micro USB uh, extension to it and the USB on the other end, you're going to be absolutely fine. So what you're going to need to do is connect your mini that way to your PC via USB port. Push the power switch into the on position and whilst doing that, hold down the reset button simultaneously until the red LED light disappears. Bam! So I'm in now recovery mode. You heard a little ding there. Again, power switch into the on position. Hold reset button down until the red LED light disappears. And then go to kernel install repair. Bam. And now it's actually going to install everything I need in order to run Hashi via NES, SNES, and now Mega Drive Mini with the future update. And uh, you're going to see this go into recovery mode soon up here. And right here it says offline right here. It's going to basically go into an SSH, uh, kind of a data transfer protocol mode that uh, was incorporated a while back to make transfers way, way faster and as fast as copying and pasting. Once this is all said and done, we're going to add a few games and then install the appropriate cores, aka emulators, so we can have some fun with this system. Great, great system, great lineup of games, and I'm going to do a little showcase of a few of these games once this process is done. And waiting for your mini, it's going to reboot right now automatically, and you're going to see right up here, it's going to go into recovery mode. And you can also see this little command prompt window here that is basically showing you all that's going on. I mean, it's very, very helpful, especially when you're troubleshooting. And again, uh, Patent Plays and myself will do countless videos, depending on what feedback and uh, comments you leave in our videos. Right here, recovery mode. Right here, online mode, SSH. Yes, if you want tutorials on how to run like Amiga games, Super Nintendo games, Genesis games, whatever have you will, just let me know and uh, either of us will do some videos on them. 
We can upload games to our mini now. So let's add a few games uh, to this bad boy. We're going to go to File, Add More Games, As Is. And uh, As Is is actually uh, featured that I requested personally to add to Man 827 add because some games don't properly add, such as a case point example called Castlevania Verse for Arcade, which has one singular bin file internally in the arcade for those of you who are more technically savvy with arcade games in general. So we're going to go to File Add As Is, and we're going to add Three Ninjas Kickback, the single best game in all of existence, without a doubt. Do not even attempt to argue with me, or I'll take a, uh, a hammer and just lay the thunder down on you. So we're going to do this right now, and if you have an artwork file identically named Case Sensitive, it has to be Case Sensitive exactly to the file name right here. It'll actually auto-add the artwork. Just watch. And you can choose the appropriate console and core for the following game. I'm going to just simply highlight it, go to unassigned, and I'm going to show you how to properly propagate this list after I add a few games. But right here are the list of cores with which you can run. There are nearly a hundred of them. We're going to do Genesis plus GX, one of the Genesis cores right here. Apply it, and we're good to go. We can go to artwork here, and we have artwork niftily added. I'm going to get back into the artwork here in a minute or two, but let's add a few more games. Let's add another game that I'm a big fan of. How about Gargoyles, a game that is a great cartoon series, and unfortunately it was released in the later lifespan of the Genesis, kind of when the PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn were coming out, so it didn't do as well as a result. But if you like Ninja Gaiden, you're going to be right at home with this incredibly amazing game. Genesis Plus GX again. Okay. And again, I'm going to show you how to propagate this list in a minute here. Once we get a few more games, Justice Plus GX. Okay, and uh, what else do we want to add? We're going to add, um, how about an Amiga game called Walker? Not Walker, Texas Ranger, mind you. This is more of a Ed 209 inspired affair, kind of like Robocop style, for those of you who remember that. Drop your weapon now scene. Okay, and we're going to do this with the Commodore Amiga PUAE Extreme Core. And uh, unfortunately, some cores require BIOS, and Amiga happens to be one of these. Uh, let's add a few more games here. Uh, let's add a PlayStation 1 game. How about Ridge Racer? Okay, Ridge Racer is accounted for, and we're going to run that with, uh, obviously, Sony PlayStation. And we're going to run that with the Neon, which is the best of the PlayStation cores. And uh, what else do we want to add? We're going to add an incredibly amazing open board game for those of you familiar with that. And Douglas Bowden, a.k.a. Illusionist, uh, Jafer, and Doom all worked on this. And we're going to add this incredible game. And in previous releases, this game did not work on any of the mini classics. But with the next release, this is going to work on the Mega Drive, SNES, and NES, as well as the PlayStation Classic. And this is going to run with the open board core. And I actually, I did not set that, so I could actually right-click if you do not do it. And I could uh, select emulation core manually if I want to right-click. So you can change it that way, too. We're going to go down to open bore. Okay, open bore. Yes. And are there, oh yeah, we want to add a few arcade games. Definitely need to add an arcade game or two. Uh, let's add bad dudes. And we're going to run this with Main 2003 Extreme, my personal build, which uh, Grant2258, Arcades 2003, and a few others have helped me out with. Uh, and they've done an incredible job, and it's been a great collaboration all around. And uh, we've gotten stuff like Irem, System32, and I'm talking like In the Hunt as far as Irem, and obviously System32, such as Spider-Man the Arcade Game, Golden Axe, Death Hatter, and so on. We're going to, again, I went, went right past this. We're going to do Main 2003 Extreme right here in the list. Right there. Bam. We're going to run one other game with uh, Mame Tales and 3 Extreme as well. We'll do uh, a violent game called Night Slashers. We'll do the exact same thing, Night Slashers, and we'll run that with Mame Tales and 3 Extreme. Then we're going to do another beautiful thing indeed as well, once we get these in here. Okay, we're all good on those. And in order to get the cores, aka emulators, you're going to open up modules, came up these mod help, and then you're going to have this nice list of... Kind of like a store, a virtual store here. You can get all the cores manually. They're by system type. So we're going to scroll down to uh, where it says Sega. And we're going to get the Genesis Plus GX core. Simply click download. And then for the other set cores, you can do the same exact thing. Like if I want to get Nintendo Virtua Boy, download this MedDefend Virtua Boy core. And uh, you can also go, once you get all the cores, you're going to need to get RetroArch right here. Download it. Just download these for now. Download the cores you want. Download the RetroArch you want. And then they're going to go right into this folder right here. They're going to download right into this user mods folder. 
And once they're in that folder, they can be installed. I'm going to show you how this works. You can go to the Games tab and get some games, and I'm going to get Doom 1. And if you notice to the right, Pre-Rock is at PR Boom, which means I need the PR Boom course. So I'm going to download that. It's going to download right to my games folder. And I can even get a RetroArch shortcut so you can open up RetroArch anytime. And I give personal thanks to Fokino Powers for doing this amazing Power Glove art and this amazing Power Pad art. So we're going to download the Power Glove one right now. Bam. Nice RetroArch shortcut. We can even get other games too. Like we can get Open Board Beats of Rage if we so choose to. Which requires the Open Board Core. I'll do that. But yeah, look at these. Now I add more games in the future. There are roughly like 30 plus games right now. I'll definitely add more in the future. Probably as part of like a New Year's update or such. And I can't bump the keyboard and bump the camera to boot. Okay, now we're all good to go here. And uh, I'm not going to highlight this right now because I already have Avengers Unite Battle Force, but we should have enough here. Now I'm actually going to do a quick audit and make sure all these titles show up in a nice, concise way so that I can have them highly organized for a syncing process. So I'm going to actually take uh, Bad Dudes and do a little prefix on it. Arcade, semicolon, Bad Dudes. I'm bad, right? Doom's okay. Night Slashers I need to do Arcade on. And then I'm going to verify the artwork, make sure I'm happy on all that. RetroArch's fine. Three Ninjas Kickback, I obviously want a SNES uh, prefix on. Actually, Mega Drive. <laughs> It is a Mega Drive. There is a uh, port of it on the SNES as well, which I made fun of countless times. I still enjoy the game, especially the uh, Sega CD version. Gargoyles is Mega Drive. Okay, uh, Ridge Racer is obviously PSX. Help if I do a semicolon properly. And then uh, Amiga. And out of these, obviously, we're going to need uh, BIOS for Amiga and PlayStation 1. I mean, I'm going to show you how this works, too. Okay, we got all these accounted for. Everything's accounted for. Now we're just going to go through the artwork and make sure it's all the way I want it. Click artwork. Yes, we have the arcade artwork. Uh, we have that for Night Slashers. Doom's okay. Uh, Retroarch is okay. Amiga's okay. I want to make sure this says Open Bore on here. So it shows up chronologically and alphabetically. Okay, then we're looking at the artwork here on uh, Three Ninjas, that's okay, Cargos is okay, but I'd like to add Spines here as well, because here we have the Nintendo for NES and S and its classics, but Danaman and Mad Monkey have done an amazing job here, where this works out in a beautiful way, watch this, I have the Gargoyles uh, artwork right there, but I can also add a Spine, and I'm going to do that right now, and so uh, Tim Squid did a great job on these Spines, I'm going to add Three Ninjas, Actually, not three ninjas, gargoyles. Sorry. <laughs> we don't want to have the wrong artwork there. Okay, that's okay. Now I can add the three ninjas one. Or I can just type in three ninjas so I don't have to let it populate. There we go. So we got two spines there. And uh, this is one way you can do it. I'm going to show you the other way you can do it as well. You can actually click this entire thing right there. Go to Browse. Or you can go to Google search results or do the spines. I mean, you can do so many things. You can change the top one. I'm going to go to browse real quick and change three ninjas. I'm going to go back to my folder here. Like I said, there are a half dozen ways you can do this. I'm going to go to these uh, nice CE formatted ones. I'm going to post these in a release as well. Bam. Right here, it is done in such a clever way where right here it's displaying as one entire entity. But on the main user interface, you're only going to see this portion right here. And then the spine will be separate. That is awesome. And you can also change the top to its own unique entity as well. So I'm going to leave this alone this way right now. I'll have this uh, for Three Ninjas Kickback. And then I'll have this for Gargoyles. Now I have to actually install the emulators here. And as I mentioned, I'm going to need BIOS for Amiga and BIOS for PlayStation 1. I'm going to go back to the Mod Hub real quick. And uh, there's actually a BIOS tab here. And there's a Master BIOS module. And if you actually read the information there, it tells you what you're going to need for all of the BIOS. So if I scroll down to, say, PlayStation 1 right here, it tells me I need these BIOS right here. And these are case sensitive. Exactly, matter of factly, have to be exactly like this. I'm going to need these three BIOS right here to play USA, Europe, and Japan files. Then uh, for PUA, which is much more advanced, I've done tutorials on this. You're going to need these files. And I've done a tutorial, and I'll do another tutorial if I need to. But uh, once you have this downloaded, like say the module's downloaded, you're going to go into the folder right here. And it's actually in a folder structure. 
You're going to go all the way into the innards here, to the system folder. These are for Sega CD. These are for Intellivision. These right here are for Amiga, and this here is for Amiga. And these are for PlayStation 1, and this is for TurboGrafx CD. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, let me know. I'll do my best to help you along in running any games that require BIOS. But I'm all covered on PlayStation 1 and Amiga with this module along with these BIOS in here. So I'm good to go. So we're going to go to Modules, Install Extra Modules. And we're going to install these one by one here. We're going to install MAME 2003 Stream. That's going to cover Bad Dudes and Night Slashers. Then we're going to install the core that runs Doom, which is going to be PR Boom. Okay, so we got both of those cores installed. Uh, not installed yet, but we have them set to install. Now we're going to need PUA Extreme for Amiga. Then we're going to need Genesis Plus GX, obviously. For the Mega Drive games, which are 3 Ninjas, Kickback, and Gargoyles. Then uh, we need the Open Board Core, which is in its own special tab, along with the Drastic Nintendo DS Core. Way down here. Open Board. Then, of course, we're going to need uh, the PlayStation 1 Core, which is PCSX, Rearmed Neon, right here. And um, let's see if we missed anything. We seem to have everything we need right here. So we have Arcade as Main 2003 Extreme. Uh, Doom is PR Boom. We got our Open Bore. Yeah, we seem to have everything there. Oh, yeah, we need RetroArch. You cannot run stuff unless you have RetroArch installed. So don't forget RetroArch. Then we're going to install the uh, M2 Engage stuff so that we can do those games if we so choose to as well. Now we're going to click OK that we have everything here. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, right here it says I have 139 megabytes of space left to work with. And, uh... The games are selected there. It's going to pretty much do a little bit of an audit and let me know what I have left between cores, emulators, and games and such if I sync them to the internal flash memory, which again is 139 megabytes to work with. So let's do that right now. If you choose to export them to USB, you're going to need an OTG device so you can do USB host and you can run up to like 128 gigs plus if you so choose to do it that way. And you can use the uh, port on your system, the back port, in order to do USB host. We can do tutorials on that as well. You can also run a flash drive in port number two if you're not worried about having a second controller in there. Just like on a PlayStation Classic. And uh, after we have these uh, cores and emulators installed, we're going to sync the games over. We're just going to do everything internally right now. See what we have left after installing these cores. Okay. Good to go. And yes, we have another thing uh, that you're going to see in a moment here that is truly amazing and something that many of you might not have even conceivably seen happening on a Mega Drive Mini, but I'm going to show you it in action in a moment here. Let's see what space we have left once it does not it on the space here. It's going to go back into online mode and let me know how much space I have left out of the 139. So I have roughly like 19 megabytes left of space to work with. So I can actually go to modules and start your modules and install another thing if I'd like to. Uh, we can actually go to the Cheats tab and install Cheats for MAME. So yes, we can use Cheats in the arcade games if we so choose to. And there's Cheats for multiple systems. We can even do NES Cheats. Mega Drive Cheats. I mean, we can do all this stuff. So we have Mega Drive Cheats, Arcade Cheats, NES Cheats. And there are many, many other add-ons you can do. You can even do, for those of you who want to do it, an Overclock. The default system runs at 1.008 gigahertz. Uh, but the default NES and SNES Classic run at 1.2 GHz, and the PlayStation Classic runs at 1.53 GHz. So this Extreme Overclock at least makes it run at 1.34 GHz for those of you who so choose to check it out. And I can do tutorials on this as well. But I'm going to install all of these. And then we're going to last but not least sync these games. We're going to run them all internally. We're going to see what space we have left here. Again, this is doing a combined audit of the emulators, cores, all the add-ons, and then the games that I so choose to sync over. Okay. And once we sync, we're going to do a little gameplay demonstration. But again, thank you, Mad Monkey and Danaman827. <laughs> You've done such a wondrous job. And I love using the word wondrous because it is so funny to hear uh, in the show Letter Kenny. It never, ever gets old. Perfect use of the word. By the way, I've also been watching the show Witcher on Netflix. I'm three episodes in. Thoroughly enjoying it. It really, really follows uh, Witcher 2 and Witcher 3, the games, nearly to the T. It is so fun to see. And for those of you who read the books as well, incredible as well. Okay, let's see what we have left now, space-wise. Make sure we didn't overdo it. You don't want to get too far overboard here. Online, let's see what space we have left. 
And then I'm going to show you the next step in the process. I'm still good to go here. We're going to go to where we uh, see structure here. And you can choose to have all the games in one single lineup in the main user interface. Or you can actually do folders uh, by clicking custom. I'm going to go to custom. Sync games. Now I actually have all the games here. I have three folders I've already made here. I'm actually going to just leave these two Mega Drive games in their own folder. I'm going to go to Unsorted for the rest. And I'll put uh, Amiga through Doom in folder 2. And then I'll put um, Open Bore and uh, Ridge Racer into folder 3. And I'll actually leave the Retro Arc shortcut on the main menu. And then when I'm done, I'm going to delete the empty Unsorted folder. And if you ever delete those, you might sometimes have a recycle bin that you need to delete as well. But whatever's right here, I have the retro arc icon, folder 1, 2, and 3. They're all going to display in the main user interface. And you can actually add icons if you so choose to for these uh, folders as well. But I'm not too concerned with that right now. But you can if you so choose to. I'm going to click OK. It's going to sync the games. And I'm going to boot up the system and try all these uh, half dozen games real quick. So we're going to boot up to the system right now. I'm going to unclick this... Uh, HDMI and connect it to my Mega Drive Mini. And I'm actually using the PlayStation Classic controller on the uh, Mega Drive Mini because it works amazingly well. So here we go, let's do some gameplay demonstrations. Okay, back out. We got uh, the icon for RetroArch here. We can open up RetroArch right from here anytime we want to. We have four, one, two, and three. What are we gonna try first? Uh, gargoyles? We'll try Gargoyles, amazing game. And I, this is by far one of my favorite games, along with Michael Jackson's Moonwalker and Lakers vs. Celtics. I mean, I could go on for hours naming my favorite Genesis games, but love this game. And I want to watch the cartoon series again. I mean, I'm kind of wondering whether or not the banned episode, the one that they removed from circulation on the air due to a, a kind of a traumatic event that occurs, is in the Disney Plus lineup because they do have the show on Disney Plus right now. I've played this game so many times, and yes, it came out kind of around the time it's Vector Man 2, and it really definitely shows it's an absolute masterpiece. I love the cartoony look here, and this is uh, probably a 9 out of 10 challenge. It is not an easy game to beat whatsoever. It takes a lot of getting used to. We'll get a little bit into this game, but yes, it plays like uh, your typical Batman or Ninja Gaiden game. Oh, I love the moveset here. Doing a double tap and attack does a roll, uh, a roll attack. <laughs> awesome stuff there. You can do a double uh, jump right there. And I'm remembering of this old uh, B movie about Gargoyles from the 1970s, which I used to watch at Big Chuck Little John. Uh, for those of you who are in the Cleveland, Ohio area, obviously many of you might have your own B movie uh, host. Like super host and so on, depending on what country, state, or such you're in. I really don't even need to fight him. I probably could have just, uh, won away from him. I need to do a Star Wars Force Blast to knock him off the cliff there. There we go. Or her, since she did a little work. Okay, looks like we're gonna have to roll through there. Bam! Now we're gonna crash through here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I died. Where am I going to start at? Hopefully not the way beginning. Let's take care of this person now. Try not to die the second time around. You can hear me mashing the buttons. And this game gets really cool because I don't want to spoil it too much, but it really gets cool later on. Oh, yeah. Definitely digging this game. Let's try doing a roll attack on that guy. That works too. <laughs> oh yeah. About halfway through the stage. Oh, we know what happens here. This reminds me of Demon's Cross actually with that thing. But yeah, I'm loving Gargoyles here. An absolutely incredible game. We're going to hold Select and Start on my system. Or we can push the Reset button on the Mega Drive Mini to get to Retro Arc. And then we can actually go to Exit. Like that. And then we're going to try a few of the other games real quick. But Gargoyles, it's a tremendously amazing game. Okay, let's get at it. We're not going to play 3 Ninjas Kickback right now. Sorry, guys and gals. It's there just for a joke. Uh, let's go to Folder 2 see what we have here. Oh, we have this amazing Amiga game called Walker. We're going to play that now. 
And again, you do need bios, and I have I did a recode of the core so you can actually run the mouse and the key. Oops! Guess what, guys and gals? I forgot to install something. That is why the game went back to the main menu. Let's go to the PC real quick. Can you guess what I forgot to install? Modules, install your modules. I forgot to install the master BIOS module with the BIOS in order to run Amiga. So we're going to install it right now. And then we're going to boot back to the system. So once it installs, it should go right back to the main user interface right here. The Hatchy logo is on there into it. And it finishes installing. It should just take a few seconds. But I forgot to install the BIOS. So the Amiga game obviously is not going to work without the BIOS. Uh, it should take just a few more seconds. So I'm going to pause it until it's done installing. Okay, it's done installing it. I should be getting to back to the main user interface right here, and I'll just reload the game. It should load up just fine. But use Elko Cheryl for the win. We'll hear that amazing music again. Okay, let's reload the game. And yes, I remember the exact last game that I was on. There it's loading because I have the BIOS installed. And listen to these incredible, realistic, authentic, floppy disk loading sounds. That is awesome for those of you who actually remember the real system. I'm definitely going to be showcasing many, many more Amiga games in the future. But, again, this is recorded in a special way. So you can actually run um, the mouse and keyboard via the controller. It works awesome. I'm going to show you how this works once I get into the game. Once we get past the initial load uh, here. And this game requires both mouse and uh, general keyboard style controls. And I'm going to do it in a very, very special way. Let's get in game here. We'll just get the game started. And again, I'm using the PlayStation Classic controller. Look, it's like an N209 style character. Okay, you can actually push uh, L1 to pull up the keyboard, the virtual on-screen keyboard. You can push R1 and look at the bottom up. It says Joypad 1, 2, 3, 4. I can push the select button to switch between mouse and Joypad. I'm going to leave it in Joypad for right now. And then I'm going to actually hold up uh, the R1 button. L1 button, should I say, and I'm going to go to F3, because watch this. It says F1 for easy or F3 for arcade. I'm going to push L1, and then I can push F3. Now I enter arcade mode. Turn L1 and turn it off. I'm going to push R1 to see whether or not I'm in joypad or mouse mode right there by pushing the select button. So we're good to go on that. And then we have the blitz in the bottom right, which is very, very cool. But, uh, I mean, I can push R1 to turn off that little thing in the bottom of the watch. R1 turns it off, on, off, on. But I'm going to leave it on for right now so I know exactly what I'm on. I'm actually going to use the D-pad to control the robot, but I'm going to use the mouse controls to control the cursor radical. Just watch. And we got our little announcer telling me what I need to do, my mission and such. This is one of the coolest, uh, uniquely awesome uh, Amiga games. See, I'm moving with my D-pad, but these people on the screen there, I push the like to go to mouse mode, and I can shoot them! Drop your weapons! That's 209 style. And if I hold the button down, it'll actually watch my gun temperature goes to high. Critical, it can actually overheat and you can't use it temporarily. This is such a cool game. And it works awesome if you have a sound system with the bass cranked up to the max. And Spartacus just went by me. My gun's overheating! Ah! Now I'm playing in arcade mode. If you think that you're going to have trouble with your shield, uh, basically, uh, it's expiring, go to easy mode to get used to the game. And by the way, if you use like a Logitech controller or a controller that has analogs, you can use your analog to do the uh, mouse controls by default, the way it is uh, set up. My gun overheated, oh no! <laughs> Let's do a little bit more of this. I know we get some aerial uh, things like helicopters and planes too. Oh no, my shield is it. I gotta back up there. There he is. Come on, shield. Don't let me down. Ah, uh, I'm not, not powerful enough to take them out. I was hoping I could take a plane out, but I'll get another thing here in the future. Now let's take out these things before they take me down. My shield is so low right now, I know I'm going to die if I don't take these out in good working fashion here. Such an intense game here. Oh yeah, I love these explosions. 
Well, at least if I do die, I get to see how my robot explodes, which is always fun to see. Oh no, these got people above there. Oh no! Let's take these guys out. This is such a cool game. Shields down. <laughs> I'm bare bones now. This is so cool. Get a midair. Kind of like in Rampage where you grab the people midair as they're coming down. Oh, my show is so low. I know I'm. Uh, uh, welcome to your doom is gonna happen soon. We got a tank here. A few tanks, which I know are gonna end up taking me out if I don't take them out in time. Oh no. Bam. But anyway, this is Walker, and uh, let's end this on the note. Let's let these uh, vehicles take me down, see what happens when I get taken down. Come on, take me down. Go ahead. Bam, bam, bam. Ah! Okay, we're gonna go into Retro Arc Settings and exit. Awesome stuff there. We got a few more games we can try real quick. Uh, let's go here. We got, uh, Night Slashers Arcade. If you love your violent games like Splatterhouse, this game is absolutely amazing. It used to have encryption. It's a day these game. That, uh, Arcade 2003 was amazingly enough awesome in helping get this run on May 2003's game. Okay, let's try this for a brief moment here. See what character we want to pick. And by the way, Open Board has a great, great version of this as well. Uh, obviously, uh, Night Slashers X. <laughs> We'll pick the female character. Let's do some mayhem and violence here. If there ever was a Castlevania side scrolling game, uh, this is definitely the game to be. Like a Neo Castlevania side scrolling brawler. Just need a whip. Awesome, awesome game. And uh, you're probably not going to get better performance and speed on this game other than on uh, the main 2003 Extreme Core. And by the way, I am running with Overclock right now, so I'm at 1.34 gigahertz. At 1.008 gigahertz, this game is choppy as can be. So Overclock definitely helps out on this game. And on the NES and S NES Classic, at 1.2 gigahertz, the game runs fine. Let's do some moves. Let's try doing like a throw move. And since this is such an incredible brawler game, we're going to definitely have to do the Avengers United Battle Force as one of our final games in the video. But yes, the uh, future is bright. We definitely got to wear shades. Great song. Let's see what other kind of violence we can do here. Awesome stuff. Loving this game. Take a few more uh, enemies down. <laughs> see if we can do a special move here while we're here. Oh, look at him decapitating the head there. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did a special move. So that game is incredible. We're gonna try uh, the other arcade game real quick. We'll do bad news. Maybe we'll uh, activate a cheat code while we're at it. Uh, let's go in the arcade here. Uh, we'll do bad dudes. Absolutely love this game. I've played it so many times over the years. Uh, we're actually going to push R2. And since we have the cheats age about installed, we're going to go to cheats. And they both cheats. And uh, we're going to go to, uh, we can go Infinity Live so we don't have to insert coins whatsoever. We can even always have nunchucks or knife. We can do all kinds of fun stuff with these cheats. When you're done, go to return to prime menu and then uh, resume the game. <laughs> I'm going to push select, insert coins, push start, and we're going to have some 80s uh, nostalgic here with President Ronnie being kidnapped. Kind of like with uh, Madonna the singer being kidnapped and Vigilante, that great Jackie Chan inspired affair. Uh, let's do some awesome stuff here. Sound system's up and these uh, sound effects are so bone crunchingly amazing. Love the music. And the first boss is so damn cool for those of you who played other Diddy's games. You'll see in a moment here. I'm bad. You'll see what I mean by I'm bad. And by the way, the first game I ever played on MAME was actually Sly Spy, also made by Diddy. And it's one of my absolute favorite arcade games, along with Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Look, we have infinity lives. No big deal. No loss, no harm, no foul. Some of you don't want to have to keep inserting coins. You can do infinity lives on many of these arcade games. And some of these cheat codes are amazing. Now, if you're playing a game like Counter Castle, the unlisted, untitled Castlevania arcade game, uh, cheat codes are definitely helpful because it is a hard as nails game to play. So if you want training wheels with cheat codes, there you go. Look who this is. It even has his music. Who is this, guys and gals? Tell me. Starts with a K. What character is this that I'm fighting right now? 
Definitely having a knife helps out with this battle. Oh no! Three more life slivers to go. He's almost done. And we'll see the next stage for a brief moment here. I'm bad! I'm bad! Yeah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what the next stage is like for a brief moment in time. Then we're gonna do one final game. Uh, we're gonna save the best for last. Oh yeah, I love this girl in here. Drink some Coca-Cola. Makes me want to go out and get some Coke now. Definitely a Coke can in my opinion. Yeah, Data East, one of the best arcade companies in my opinion. Okay, we're gonna exit now and uh, go back. And we're gonna try Avengers United Battle Force as our final game. That should be in folder. Oh, we got Doom. Sorry, I gotta do Doom for a moment. We did install PR Boom. Of course, we gotta do Doom for a moment. Oh, yeah, never gets owned. See if we can remember this uh, first stage. It's been a while since I played this. I remember uh, years ago when I used to work at Taco Bell before I got into IT tech and stuff. I used to come home and play Doom on Nintendo 64. Those were the days. Okay, I'm remembering where to go here. It's been a while. Right here. This music never gets old. And by the way, you can actually play custom soundtracks for this too, by simply having the MP3 files in the same directory as the Doom game. Now I'll do a separate tutorial on this as well. Obviously, this is going to work a lot better if you do USB host. Oh yeah. And Doom Single also works, and by the way, it is on the Mod Hub as well. You just have to provide the Doom 1, uh, the full version. It's not going to work with the version I'm playing right here. This is the free version. you got to do the retail version in order to play Single. Oh, yeah. And if you want to see me run any other games for any system, just let me know, and I'll run them in another showcase demonstration video. But yes, Doom works great, and we're going to do our final game, which is uh, Open Boar Avengers United Battle Force, courtesy of Douglas Bowden, aka Illusionist, uh, Jafer, and Doom. Let's go to that folder, which should be in folder 3, uh, right here. And of course we got Ridge Racer as well, I mean, maybe... You're in for a real treat with this amazing game, and I'm so glad that Douglas Bowden took the time to help troubleshoot and debug this and get it working on many classics. We did a great collaborative job, and it is so awesome. If you like Marvel War of Gems and or X-Men Mutant Apocalypse on Super Nintendo, you're going to be right at home with this game. It is a nice tribute takeoff of the Captain America and the Avengers arcade game made by Data East with additional Marvel characters to boot. And just, uh, we're going to get into the character list here. You can see some of them here on the initial uh, attract mode screen. And then you'll have a little bit of a tutorial for the characters, uh, obviously, if you want to see those. Uh, we have unlockable content, training, all kinds of awesome stuff there. Uh, we have Black Widow, Spider-Woman, Black Cat, Commander Abigail Brand, Emma Frost, Beast, Wolverine, Tigra, Quicksilver. And here's the cool thing. Right here, I am literally just looking at a little bio uh, biography. The stats at the bottom left, the real name, alias. But you can tap down, and some of these different palettes actually have different movesets, like the real cartoon and comic book counterparts. So you're talking hundreds of hours dedicated to trying to make this as authentic as possible. So awesome. Vision, Thor, Hulk, Hawkeye, Iron Man, Captain America, Back to Black Widow. We're going to play as the default palette for Black Widow, a.k.a. Scarlett Johansson. And I just saw the trailer for that movie. Definitely looking forward to that. But uh, let's check this out. No two games are the same because you have multi-tiered paths and so on. You can uh, look at the tutorials there, but also additionally, some tutorials are displayed while you're playing the game. You'll see what I mean in a moment here. Great, great game. And uh, we have our typical moveset. Just look at the little uh, GUI here. We have our character name. We have our white and yellow help bar. Our character lives, a blue meter. And then we have a little icon right here, which is actually our sub movesets. So I can actually do a hollow can move, kind of like in Street Fighter, where I do down forward and attack. Watch. And I do a gun. And it draws some of my blue meter there. And then I can actually change that moveset out with other moves. I'll even do like a throw move. I'll go up and throw a character. And then I can do a jump kick in the air. I can tap down twice in the attack button and change my moveset. Now I'm on a different moveset. I was shooting a gun. Now let's see what I do now. Now I'm doing an electricity blast. That is awesome. I'll do like uh, another attack. 
I do a hurricane kick like a double dragon too. And we all know that when you play Revenge of Shinobi and you can do the uh, high arc shuriken throw and or the double dragon to hurricane kick and master them, you can take out the entire game with relative ease. Okay? What other moves do we have here? Let's do to, to another move set here. Okay, I'm gonna do down down attack and move to another move set. Let's see what this is. Oh, I can leave mine. That is awesome. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. Let's try another one. Let's let my blue meter charge up because I'm gonna have a very very special amazing attack which is gonna draw all my power if I do it. Let's wait till a few enemies are on screen and try it. Come on, come on, come on. Give me a few enemies. Oh yeah, that was down, up, down, special attack, and I had a bullseye target, which I could aim on the screen. So awesome, indeed. So many cool characters in this game, and uh, if you want to see more of this game in action, I'll probably do another video on it, but for right now, we're going to exit. it. And it is a standalone emulator, so you have to actually quit the game in order to exit. it. So I can start, will not work on this for the Mega Drive Mini as of right now. Uh, we're going to exit, it, and we'll do as our final, 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 final game. Uh, Ridge Racer for a brief moment in time. And somebody has made a joke before that I would say I'm going to do one more game, then I do another game, then another game. So of course I'm going to have to do that. And we have BIOS installed, so we're going to run Ridge Racer for a brief moment. And, uh, wonder if I can get through the Galaga uh, initialization processor and actually take out all the enemies. Okay, let's try this for a brief moment. And I used to love putting real music CDs in this back in the day. I don't think I'm going to take all the enemies here, but I'll try real quick. Oh no, I missed already. Oh no, I failed. I missed the last two. Maybe next time. Love this game, though. Such a cool game. Maybe we'll get off to a better start here. Three, two. two one, and I swear that's the same announcer from uh, Wave Race, is it not? Wave race! I think that's the same guy. I, I don't doubt it isn't. I'm sorry I didn't play Three Ninjas Kickback, guys and gals. Do you want me to play Three Ninjas Kickback? Do you want to see that awesome game? I'm sure you do. It's the final, 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 final game in this video, right? Because I know you're going to make that your first game that you had, and you're probably so thoroughly disappointed like I am with Revenge of Shinobi, and of course Streets of Rage 1, that they did not add three ninjas kick back. I just want to go watch that movie now. I have to watch that movie again. Right up there with TMT 2, Seeker of the Ooze with Vanilla Ice, right guys and gals? But I love that Ernie Reyes Jr. was in that, uh, and he was a great person I used to love watching, uh, and, uh, the show Sidekicks, uh, Old TV show, great, great show. Okay, we're gonna actually exit and we're gonna do uh, as our final game, Three Ninjas Kickback. We have to end up on a, a, a high note, right? So we're gonna do Three Ninjas Kickback, which should be in our first folder. And again, try the second CD version, which has an amazing CD soundtrack. Here you go, best game ever made. I almost want to watch the TMNT 2 Secret Ooze with Ernie Reyes Jr. who happened to be on another show I used to watch way, way back then called Sidekicks, which had the guy from Buck Rogers, another show I used to watch, but uh, I used to love watching some of these goofy things. I mean, I even went on my way to watch the Vanilla Ice movie uh, back then just because I heard it was so bad, cool as ice. But it was actually enjoyable in the movie, nonetheless. I mean, some of them bad movies, even though they're rated 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, are still fun to watch. And this game right here, even though it is critically deemed as a bad game, I actually find it a fun game to play. And the second CD version actually has an amazing soundtrack to boot. I died already! Oh no! Yeah! Yeah! That'll never get old hearing them do yeah, yeah, yeah over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah! I'll shut up now and let you enjoy the video. But yes, actually the Sega CD version of this is not half bad. This, I think even the worst games, when they add a CD soundtrack to them, they're pretty damn fun to play. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to torture you anymore. Hope you enjoyed the video. There'll be more to come.